Hello everyone, my name is Skalti, and today we're going to be creating an AI limiter factory producing 30 items per minute at 100% efficiency. I hope you enjoy. Alright, to get this build started, let's go over what we're going to need for the factory. On the right, you can see we're going to need 6 assemblers, 25 constructors, and 18 smelters. And then in terms of the miners, it's going to be dependent on where you're going to be building this. Currently, we are in the very southern portion of the map, near the grasslands starting area. And I'm tapping into two Caterium and two Copper Nodes. And the ore requirement for the factory is going to be 360 Caterium ore and 300 Copper ore, divvied up as needed based on miner availability. Uh, currently, I'm tapping into the two impure copper nodes here with Mark II miners overclocked to 250%, giving us 150 copper ore each. And then we have a Caterium node over here, giving us 180. And then we have one way off in the distance right there, giving us another 180 for our 360 total. Additionally, the space you're going to need for the factory is 11 by 5. And the actual footprint is going to be 9 by 3. The minimum power draw, based on your miners uh, not included in this, will be 262 megawatts. Every machine, except for the miners, will be operating at 100%. So for our smelter locations, essentially every foundation on the long edge is going to have a splitter, as we need 18 of them. So for our walls, we can go ahead and get our single conveyor walls in place, and we want to utilize, whoops, each one on a long edge here. And for those unfamiliar, I'm currently using the Smart Foundation mod, that allows me to place multiple walls, foundations, machines, etc. Uh, with one single click, which is really super helpful and convenient. Go ahead and fill this in with our 8x1 foundations, like so. And then this white foundation here, I've denoted, this is going to be the back of our factory. So that way it's a little easier to keep track of orientation, because some of the belting and uh, relative directional necessity is going to be uh, needed for this build. So being able to follow along a little easier is definitely going to be helpful. So now we can go ahead and get our smelters in place. We need nine on each side. And when placing your smelters, you want to make sure that you have them hanging off by just a little bit. And the reason we want to do this is so that way when it comes time to place our lifts, you can see that they will snap cleanly to the wall below. You can hear the beep. Let's get the rest of these in place. And so when it comes to doing the load balancing, essentially eight of these smelters are going to be utilized for Caterium and the remainder, which would be 10, are going to be used for the copper. So we're going to have these four smelters here and these four smelters here being utilized for a car. <clears throat> you being utilized for our Caterium, which is on the right side of our factory and the middle one, we will leave alone and that will be for our copper. And that is good to note, so that way when it comes to doing our load balancing down below. This is where we have our copper coming in. Each line has the 150, so we need to do a 1 to 5 load balancer per belt. And so to get that started, we want to find the middle of our factory, which would be this here. And going off to the right two foundations, or in between the third and fourth back uh, smelters, again the back being where that white foundation is, and in the very middle we want to place a splitter facing off in that direction toward the left. In front of it we want to take a merger leading directly into that splitter, and then in front of that merger we want another splitter, so it is essentially from the right side of the factory it is splitter into merger into splitter. Then next to this splitter, we want to take another merger facing off toward the back of the factory. 
And then off of that merger, we want to take a splitter, again facing off toward the back, and then we want to rotate this 180 degrees and stick it right here in the middle, so that way facing the back of the factory, we get this little staircase design, if you will. And so we'll take a Mark III belt and we'll bring this in, feeding off into the what would be the bottom right splitter, looking at the back side of the factory. And then essentially here in between each of these splitters and mergers, so the four here, five, six, and then out of this back splitter, we want this to feed into the middle splitter here. And we want to use the Mark II to ensure that we're not bottlenecking ourselves. And that is essentially the one to five splitter. And so now we have two more outputs from this splitter here and three from this splitter here. And those are going to be feeding into five of the smelters we're going to be using for our copper ore. So from this one here, we're going to take our Mark I belt and bring it all the way over and line it up with this smelter here. This one here will come directly out of there. So that's the two outputs for this one. And then for these here, come down. Oop. This one will come over. And then out of this one, we will feed our middle smelter over here. So we'll go ahead and bring our lift down. And feed it in. So that takes care of our five copper smelters over there. And then for over here, essentially we're going to be repeating the exact same thing, except this time we're going to be starting in between the second and third. And then again in the middle here. So we'll do splitter, merger, splitter, merger off to the back, splitter off to the back, and then turning our splitter 180 in the middle, fitting into our merger here repeating our Mark II belting. Making sure that's all set. And then we will take our Mark III belt and run it all the way down. So that splitter here. And then off of these here, we will essentially be routing this one into the middle over here and we want to loop it behind here so essentially bring it off this way just like that this one will feed into here and then similar to the other one like that Oh, that's off of the merger. My mistake. Got a little turned around here. There we go. So again, we have our 150 copper ore coming in here. That's splitting into two lines of 75. And this breaks out into three lines here. And then essentially the way this one to five works is this feeds back into this splitter here. And this would be the what would be the sixth line out. And this sixth line essentially takes what would be the even distribution across all of these and feeds it back into these two mergers, which then redistributes it and gives us our one to five load balance system. So now it's time for our Caterium. And so for that, what we're going to do is take our eight by one foundations and build that up and kind of cover these to get our uh, to create a create the ability uh, to do some belting up top here. And so the Caterium is going to come in from over here and that is going to be 180 per belt. So we want to make sure that we're using our Mark III lifts here and essentially in line with the wall. Oh, need to go back one more like so. Bring that up, beat the process, get these connected. 
And then the 180, essentially we just need to distribute a 1 to 4, which is super simple. So for that, we can go ahead and just take our splitter, facing toward the back, facing toward the front, and then one in the middle. Make sure this is going in the right direction. Do a Mark II belt in between here. And get these all connected up. That one's good. And then this will feed whoop, Mark III belt into there. We can repeat the process down over here. So a splitter, what would be essentially in the middle of all of them. And when placing these, you want to make sure that you are um, in the middle of these foundations here. Split and split. And now we can go ahead, if you want, you can leave the foundations, you can get rid of them so everything's floating, it's completely up to you. But essentially we now have everything in here load balanced, so we can go ahead and head back out. And so just as a reminder, it is essentially these four smelters here, and these four here, making our caterium. And so what we want to do is we want to take the remaining ten smelters here, and bring them onto two separate lines, one going off in each direction toward the edge here. So starting off at the edge. Also, this is the smart mod. I gotta make sure I turn that off, which was the auto connect to buildings. That's still going on. Let's see if that worked. Nope, that still didn't work. Experiencing some technical difficulties, one moment. Okay, we got that sorted out. So essentially, just to recap, this is the front smelter. So essentially you want the mergers facing off toward the front in front of all of these. And then once you get to the middle, we actually want to take our splitter. So again, four on this side, this is our middle. We want a splitter off of the middle one. And then on the opposite side, we want a splitter as well like so and then in or on the sides of each one we want to take our merger so this one is facing off toward that short edge we'll rotate this one around facing off toward that short edge and then we repeat the process with our mergers feeding off toward the short edge we can do the same thing with our other smelters as well for our caterium we can leave this one empty as that's going to just feed directly into the merger Rotate these around and have them facing off toward the short edge. So revisiting here in the middle with these splitters here. We essentially want to ensure that the 300 copper ingots are being divvied up into two lines of 150. So off of this smel smelter here in this splitter, we want to essentially just take this and merge it out. Same thing here. So essentially what this means is we have the two smelters in the middle here. We have 30 coming into the splitter. We have 15 going in this direction, 15 going in that direction. And then again, 30 into this splitter and then 15 and 15 merging up with the remaining other 120. So that's 15, 15 for 30 plus 120 is 150 per belt. Get this all connected up here. And then if you wanted to min-max, we go ahead and quickly take a look at the Caterium. It's 15 parts per minute, and we only have four smelters. So essentially that's going to be a Mark I belt all the way down to the edge here. Repeat the thing, same thing on the opposite side. And then from the middle, so essentially you have 30 plus 30 is going to give us 60 for our Mark I belt here. And then the 
Uh, third smelter to each side, or from in, in from each side, is going to require the Mark II belt. So that's 90, 120, and then up, upping it to the Mark III at the very edge here, giving us our 150 copper ore. So again, that's 30 in here, plus another 30, so that's a Mark I. Make sure I got this one. 60, 90 for a Mark II, 120 for a Mark II, and then 150 for a Mark III. And that completes our first floor. All right, to get our next floor started, we want to take our 8x4 foundation and build it off on the side here because every foundation on our first floor is occupied. I'm going to build it up five times. So that way we have what looks to be two full foundation, two full 8x4 foundations uh, above these smelters. And then next to that, we want to build our 8x1s. We want to build four of those. So that way it's a matching height of our upper or higher highest uh, 8x4. Delete the middle two here and the other 8x4 foundations that we constructed and that way we have the start of our sandwich layer. And so we want to build this out to match the floor below which would be 9x3. And the reason why we want to build both the top and bottom part of our sandwich layer is to avoid a clearance issue. If we build just the bottom layer and we place our mergers and splitters, we won't be able to build the top layer of the sandwich layer because of a clearance issue. So this floor will be for our quick wire production, and we're going to use 10 constructors. And so what we can do is we can actually place a constructor on every other foundation, which would be here. Oop. And essentially the same thing on the opposite side here. So to get our walls in place first, which is always helpful. We do a single wall conveyor and then normal wall and repeat the pattern all the way down. On these short edges here, even though we only have our two belts coming up, because we only need the caterium ingots for this floor, but we don't want to leave a gap in our foundation wall or in our conveyor wall, so it's, it's just to demonstrate. If we just had the caterium ingots coming up, this hole would be empty because we're actually going to be doing on our third floor our copper sheets for our copper ingots. And so we don't want to leave this open. So what we're going to do instead is take a three wall conveyor and then we can bring up our caterium on a mark one lift. Bring up our uh, copper ingots on a mark three. And then what we're going to do on the inside here is using a Mark III belt, bring it up, and essentially feed it back in and around, leading out to the middle here, and this middle conveyor will go up to our next floor, so that way we have no unsightly gaps in between. So continuing on, let's go ahead and get the rest of our walls in place. back down over here and get this belt quickly sorted out. Let's get our constructors in place before we do any of our belting. So we want five, the gap in them between each one. And when placing these, again, we want, just like the smelters below, we want them hanging over by just a little bit. So when we take our lifts, they snap to the walls below. Just like that. Now the building for this floor, because we're going to be doing a full 100% load balance, it's going to get a little tricky. So after I go ahead and go through the step-by-step -step process, I will have a screenshot available showing the belt work for you guys to be able to follow along, given the tight space here, it can get a little confusing. So we'll go ahead and start on the back edge first. And going into one, two, and three foundations, essentially in line with our second constructor, 
We're going to take a merger and face it towards that constructor. In front of that constructor, in the middle of the foundation, we will take a splitter. And then coming back around at a diagonal to this merger, we'll take a splitter facing toward the center. A merger facing toward us. So green arrow in R facing in our direction. And then a splitter facing into that merger. And then once more a splitter facing into this constructor over here. So as you can see, it can get a little confusing based on the tight spacing, but we can do it. So in between all these, we want our Mark II belt. Oh, that's the two mergers. That's why it's not going in. So we'll start from where the Katerium ingots are coming up. So we mark one belt into the uh, splitter and then connecting to the merger here coming all the way around flipping out into this merger here this is where if you're using fly mode disabling it can be quite helpful and so this will merge over into the splitter here and then this will feed off toward this constructor the very back into that constructor there. And then this third one is going to come out and around and loop back into this splitter over here. And then from here, this will merge into there and connect into those two mergers here. Oh, can't get around there. And then this splitter here will connect to all three constructors remaining. Let's just double check all of our belting, make sure everything is connected where it needs to be. And we look to be good. So now all we have left is to do these five over here. So we can essentially repeat the process in mirrored fashion. So the second to left, we will have a splitter in front. And then in the very middle foundation, a merger facing off in that same direction. Turning the merger around facing us. A splitter facing into this merger here. That merger there. one more over here and get this all connected up as well. Again, this one revisits the splitter over here. And that is essentially all of the load balancing. Again, it's just a modified version of the one to five load balancer that we did for the copper ingots down below. And then we'll go ahead and get this connected up as well. Now we can go ahead and turn our flying back on and vacate. Make sure this is all closed up over here, which it is. And now for this, we want to, again, similar to the copper ingots down below, we want to take all 10 of these and bring them off onto their own path on the other side. And so for that, we have the copper ingots coming out of the middle here. So we want actually, based on the amount that we're making, if we look here, we have 60 per minute times 10, that's 600 quick wire. Even if we divide this into two belts of 300, using the Mark III belts, we are unable to do so. So here we will be using the Mark III belts with four lines going up. 
And in order to do that, in front of the two middle constructors, we want to take a splitter in front of both. And then the remaining, we want our mergers facing off toward the respective short edge. And then here, we can take our Mark 1 belt. I think I placed this in the wrong orientation. There we go. So essentially we're splitting the 60 here into two lines of 30. So we have 30 plus 60, that's a mark 2. For a total of 90, plus another 60 is 150, so that'll be our mark 3 coming off to the edge here. And repeat the process, mark 2 and then a mark 3. That is essentially this floor, and I'll go ahead and put that screenshot up for you here. So our next floor is going to be for our copper sheets, and the belting on this one is going to be the same, if not more complicated. That didn't even make sense. It'll be as complicated, if not more complicated, than what we just did for our quick wire. Oops, I needed that one. And again, similar to the floor below, I will have a screenshot of the actual belting all completely exposed, making things a little easier to follow along with and build, given that it is a fairly tight space. So the constructor placement on this floor is going to be as follows. We'll be utilizing these four foundations here, these four here, and then these seven in the middle. Let's go ahead and get our walls in place. And now our constructors. And our belts. So we again, again, we have our 150 copper ingots coming up from each side. So it'll be a single conveyor wall. Go ahead and get it belted while we're over here. Alright, so I'm going to briefly try and explain how we're going to be doing the belting. And it's a really interesting method, method using bottlenecking based on belt speed. So the recipe for the copper sheets is 20 copper ingots in per minute with an output of 10 copper sheets. And the Mark 1 belt being 60 items per minute gives us a nice clean ability to take 60 and divide it using a single splitter into three lines of 20. So that's kind of what we're going to be relying on here is the Mark 1 belt speed to bottleneck our uh, balancing, essentially. So we will start with putting a splitter right in front of our input coming up. And then let me get my bearings here to make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. On the left, so that is essentially the back side at the moment. On the left here, we're gonna be placing our splitter in the middle between these three. And then in the middle, essentially in the cross of these two so far, we're gonna be placing a splitter here and then off to its right at a diagonal facing toward the middle will be a merger. And then here we will be, we will be placing a splitter feeding off into these three right here. And then from here, on the fourth constructor, we'll be placing a merger. And then a splitter facing off toward the middle. And then this being the middle of our floor. So we have the three over here. One, two, three. One, two, three. This middle one, the very middle foundation, we'll place a merger feeding into that constructor as well. And so now to try and explain as best I can 
how this whole thing works. So we have our 150 coming up. That's a Mark III belt. And then from this belt here, we're going to be taking a Mark I belt and feeding it off into this splitter over here. And then these will respectively get their own belt. And so this works because the amount going into the splitter off of this belt is 150, which is more than double or equal to technically, but it's more than double. So we have 150 coming up and then we will have another belt coming off this way. So essentially what this splitter is attempting to do is split this into two lines of 75 items per minute. Well, this Mark I belt is preventing that from happening. So the what would be the extra 15 are going to be put onto this Mark II belt here instead. So we're going to have 60 over here, and then the difference of 150 minus 60 is 90, so this Mark II belt will be carrying 90 copper ingots off into this splitter here. From this splitter, we're going to divide this up into three lines of 30. So we're going to take our belt and connect it to this splitter over here, and then we're going to take two lines and bring it into this merger here. And then the output from this merger is going to give us a line of 60. And then this line of 60 will be split three ways into three lines of 20. Like so. This remaining belt of 30 here, we need to put 20 into this merger. So we're going to connect this twice, like so. And then that 20 will go into that constructor there. And then we'll have 10 left over off of this belt going into this merger here in the middle. And now all we need to do is repeat the process on the opposite side. And then the remaining 10 meeting up with the other 10 will go into this merger. So now we have a merger with two lines of 10 feeding into it, feeding off into this constructor here, giving us 20, and now this entire floor is load balanced. So once more, I know that was a little complicated, so I'm going to put up a screenshot here for you while I go ahead and wrap this up, and we will proceed to our last and final floor after we get our mergers in place to get everything connected up. Okay. So now that we have that, all we need to do is now just divide this up into, I believe it's two equal lines. Yep, two equal lines of our copper sheets. So on this constructor here in the middle, we will place a splitter. And then between all of these, we'll go ahead and take a merger, facing off toward the respective short end. And so from the middle here, with our output being 10 copper sheets per minute, we're gonna be splitting this up. So five will be going to the left, five going to the right. So we'll start with the right side here. So we got five plus a respective 20. So that's 25, 45, 65. So we wanna to up to a Mark II belt. Plus another 10 is 75, going off in that direction. Again, five plus 10, or plus 20 is 25, 45, 65 and 75 and that floor is now complete so for our final floor here we're going to do something a little different with our sandwich layer layer instead of doing just a single high we're going to do a double high so you want to do four eight by four foundations and then essentially do what would be eight eight by ones go ahead and get rid of the ones in the middle and everything else. And reason being, the belting in here with the assemblers is going to get a little claustrophobic overall. And some feedback that I've received that I'm going to be putting into place in all my future guides will be to provide a little bit more room for the belting on assembler layers and especially when we get into using manufacturers. So for this layout here, we need six assemblers. So we're going to do each corner here like this, and then we are going to have one here. 
Am I short? Yes, I'm short. Oh, look at that. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Little brain part there. Okay, so... The corners, like so. One here, and then one here. So that way it all works out. So let's go ahead and get our double walls in place. And so for this, I'm going to be putting the double walls on the bottom. So it'll be a double wall here. Here. And then our input will have a three conveyor wall. And then a double. And then another assembler will be here. And so I'm going to go ahead and leave all of this open for now. Actually, I take that back. My mistake. We actually need to fill in the bottom layer at the very least. Based on where some of these splitters and mergers will be located. We want to make sure these walls are in place because we will not be able to build the walls after they are placed. So now we can go ahead and get our assemblers in location. And once more. Like everything else, we want them hanging off by just a little bit, like so. And so for the belts going up, the quick wire is going to be an input of 100 per minute. So if we go to our recipe and we are making our AI limiters, the input is 100 quick wire, so we want to use our Mark II lifts. And so the Mark II lifts will be, at least on the short edges, they will be on the outside. So it'll be a Mark II lift from here. And here. And then on this one, essentially on the outsides, it'll be on the respective left. So facing this wall from the outside, it is on the left. And then same thing over here, it'll be on the left. And then we can use Mark 1 lifts for the remaining locations. So we have our 150 lines of quick wire coming up, so that'll be a Mark 3 lift. And then we have our 75 copper sheets coming up, which will be Mark 2. Oops. Now we can go ahead and get our belting started. So in front of where our copper sheets are located on the second foundation in the middle, we're going to place a merger feeding toward the middle. And then on each respective side, we replace a splitter. And this will be receiving our quick wire. And then a merger facing into the out or the uh, outside or exterior side uh, lifts going up where we have our Mark II lifts. And that'll be facing towards them. And this is where I was mentioning that we need to have at least our bottom floor or bottom portion of walls in place because if we didn't, we would not be able to build this wall here if the merger was in place due to the minor little clipping that you can see here. And then on the, essentially where the copper sheets would be going up, which is our Mark I lift here, we will place a splitter here in the middle in line with that lift. And so we will take our quick wire and bring it up into the respective splitters. And then from here, we're going to do a line of 50, 50, and 50. So that way we get 50 plus 50 is our 100 that we need going into our assembler here. Repeat the process on the other side. And so we have our 50, 50, and 50. Again, same thing. And that leaves this merger with an output of 50 
as well. Or I'm sorry, 100, because we have 50 plus 50. So we're going to take a Mark III belt and feed it into that assembler right there. And then we're going to take our stackable conveyor poles, essentially where the elbow starts here, or where these two foundations meet. We will place a lift here, and we will also place a lift here. And this will be receiving our copper sheets coming up. Copper sheets will come down and into this splitter. We'll have a line of 25 here. A line of 25 going off in this direction. We're going to take another conveyor pole and place it in the middle here. Going up and over. Oops, I brought that out too far. My apologies. So in line with our lift over here, we want to bring our copper sheets. And that is where we will be placing our pole in the middle here. And go ahead and place another one over here. And again, I will also have a screenshot with all of this belting included as well. Just to make things a little easier for everyone. A little too far. So it is essentially this side all complete. So we just have to repeat the process on the other side here. Just like that, and now we can go ahead and get this all enclosed. And now you can take the output and put it wherever you would prefer. So I'm going to go ahead and run it off the side here. I'm going to go ahead and just leave that out, but essentially, you know, we just need to bring our lifts down. So we'll get the output sorted out get some walls located on the structure as well as getting everything up and running power wise and I will see you all on the other side. Alright, and that'll wrap up our guide. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to leave a like, it does help out the channel. If you want to see more content in the future, be sure to subscribe if you're not already. And if you have any feedback, or if you have any questions about this build, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Additionally, I'll be streaming every Thursday evening over on Twitch starting at 9pm Eastern, where you can find me playing through the game normally, possibly hitting up a 5x5 challenge mode or working on factories for these guide videos that you see here. But beyond that, once again, thank you for watching. Take care.